Boom. Present. You guys ready for this journey? Just kidding. It's not gonna. It's not gonna be that great. But I just want to show you guys because I had to do this for class. So this is my K-pop culture presentation. I had to do this for a class for academic language. So we're gonna we're relating how to use um, subculture, language, and subculture as part of the classroom. So I'm going to. Try to do this while reading the comments. I would make a really good teacher. Actually, I'm really happy also because a lot of people tell me that, or a lot of my students told me that they actually really like my teaching. So I'm, I'm really grateful for that. But I have a lot to work on, obviously, since I'm, like I'm, I'm a pretty confident tutor. But teaching forty people at once is really different from teaching one person at a time. Can I do a video in Canto for Patreon? Like, what do you want me to say in Canto? It took me... I don't know, it took me... I just did this in class. In like, a boring class, so... Alright, let's go. Background info. Korean pop music in its current form started in the 1990s with groups or solo artists trained by entertainment companies releasing songs and performing on music shows. Around 2008, thanks to YouTube and massive internet growth, it spread through to the Western world with its synchronized dances and highly well-produced music videos. Currently, BTS, the most popular, oops, I use current again, group, sells out world tours and has fans waiting on the streets a week before the concert to line up and get a closer standing spot. And these are the original K-pop um, artists in the 90s, like SES, HOT, um, I don't know, other groups like that. And then this is BTS, and this is the long line of people standing or sleeping outside Staples Center, waiting to get mugged while they try to get a better seat to increase their encounter frequency with uh, their preferred mates in BTS. Okay, next. Oh, how to get fake people out of your life. You just stop talking to them. Right? Okay. So, next thing. I've been tutoring for five years. Okay. So, the next thing, language. Usually stems from social media, i.e. Twitter and Instagram, short captions with pictures or video, with an amalgamation of different things from different cultures or parts of the internet. So, it's not just... These... The language used here is not just used in K-pop. It's used in a bunch of other places. So right here you have the nothing but respect for my president. So the the my president thing is like a meme within the K-pop community, and this refers to RM and the as president because of the speech she did at the UN. Now let's go to the important one because Yujian's here, right? So this one I had to I kind of didn't do it accurately because I had to make it like more 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 like applicable to the class. But there's U versus Owo. Right? So U versus Owo. Uwu is the it's the cute, makes you feel soft and fluffy. Smile, smallness, colorful headwear, bunny ears. I don't know, things like that. Um which is like this, obviously. So here you have a picture of Yujan being Uwu. And here's Owo. I mean I guess Owo was usually reserved for guys because I only see Owo used for guys and usually they're like half naked or something but it's like sexy feels, deep gaze, dark makeup, muscle, exposed skin which is like like dark concept versus like cute concept I guess but it's you, usually Owo is reserved for guys and Uwu Uwu happens for both genders I guess and then yeah and they're usually used they're sometimes used as contrast, so like there's the uwu version versus the owo version of each um, of each person of each idol. All right, next forms of praise. All right, so forms of praise. Um, so I'm just gonna read the list. So this is how um, K-pop fans praise their idols. 
This slayed me. I'm deceased. My wig was snatched. I'm bald. This photo cured my depression, hives, cancer, skin problems, whatever. I busted a fat uwu. I'm soft. She did that. His power. Why he gotta be so loud for? Who allowed her? So small. He snapped. Shister snapped. This was iconic. How did she- how she do that? How she do that? <laughs> Nut. He's so extra. <laughs> I just- I never thought I'd be saying these things out loud. But, anyway. On to the next thing. Oh, so this is just, uh, the wig- so it's a- it's a- it's an image of the- there goes my wig. There goes my wig and then the snatch. My wig got snatched. Unfortunately, Jungkook was the the photo that I didn't I didn't find this intentionally, but this was the only this was the only good photo of like what I was trying to find. So, Jungkook's wig got snatched. Unfortunately, that's a really bad look on on him. This is why you need me as a teacher because I teach useful things like the difference between uwu and owo. I concur. All right. Next, ways to refer to a K-pop idol. The first one, okay, so I'm just gonna read, I'm just gonna read the, the things on the list again. Um, so first is, cute bub, pretty bub, my mans, a whole ass goddess, king, queen, my girlfriend, my wife, my husband, my boyfriend, skinny legend, Miss Korea, and then here I have Taeyong in his prime skinny legend form. Skinny legend exhibit one. Skinny legend exhibit two. Although this is more deformed than I thought than I think it should be. But that's okay, I guess. Alright, next, next. <coughs> By the way, I left a lot I left a lot of things out. Like everything that are Specific, like group specific, I left out because, like, if you don't follow BTS, you won't understand BTS specific memes, unfortunately. So now I have the the LGBT because apparently, well, this is part of the woke culture, but like, I don't really like the woke culture that much. But I'm like, I'm okay with how it's used in the K-pop language community. So this is this is how people use. Um, LGBT things, and they don't even mean it in, a, in an LGBT way, but they're just like doing it for the fanfiction or something. So it's like, she did it for the gays, a win for the gays, for the gays, the the use of wife, husband, girlfriend, boyfriend, etc. for two girls in a group. Fanfiction and photos of coincidental moments. So for example, Chu and Yves. Chu and Vis just raised millions for the gays, just because they're like on each other's shoulders or something like that. And then you have, and then you have like things like this, like when you just put um, Jin and RM together, and then just photoshop their faces because they're getting married because they're the mom and dad of the group apparently, even though they're they're not. Even though they're supposed to be, even though they're supposedly straight, and then you have the accidental photos of like skinship moments or um, like could be gay moments, things like that, that are very popular in the community. Okay. Anyway, I need to read the the comments. Um. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, people also say I'm gay for etc. But the next one is miscellaneous. I don't remember how much Oh yeah, there's panic gay versus confident gay. My bad guys. I should have asked you guys to help me before I made this presentation, but whatever. I left out a lot of things, okay? So miscellaneous I would pay for her to step on me, or kick me in the face, or stab me. 
I actually use this a lot, so I can relate. And then there's the there's the there's the someone who I only know someone. So there's like Beyonce who I only know Ailee or like Justin Bieber who I only know Jungkook like things like that. And then there's the I'm so whip for him or I'm so whip for her. Good night to person only. So I say good night to Yuhyun only because I only care about Yuhyun. And everyone else doesn't get a good night. And then there's in this house we stand or in this house we appreciate something. So for example, in this house, we appreciate, we love, appreciate, and support Taehyung's mullet. Which is like, actually, out of all the idols I've ever seen, um, these are the only one who makes it kind of work. Like everyone else, I actually don't like it. Like even Taehyung, I really don't like his mullet. But V, he can pull it off. So good job, V. Um, Anyway, I need to move on to the next page. I'm trying to read this, these comments while I go through these slides. Oh yeah, and then there's the, I just want them to punch me in the face. I pay Yonggi to shove lettuce into my mouth. Oh yeah, there's, I guess there's that too. Oh yeah, then there's the crackhead stuff. I don't, I guess I didn't. I guess I didn't use that. Um, Beyonce who? I only know Shalisa. Who's Shalisa? I'm so sick of lying. Um, this lecture will be posted on my YouTube. So. Um, okay. So now I'm going to talk about um, K-pop and biology. So how could you use these terms in biology? I just ran. I didn't spend that much time on this, guys. Okay, so just just don't don't be that critical of me. So the first one is the uwu organelle. The uwu the uwu organelle. The uwu organelle is the cute version of cell organelles made to be more appealing to the typical high schooler. So a cute bug mitochondria would be an example of. The U the U organelles. Number exhibit two we have Queen Slay, the predator prey relationship between the queen and the prey. So here you have the queen, this uh, googly eyed uh, creature on top, who is um, slaying this cute elephant on the bottom. And the elephant is saying, I'm deceased. And so this is an example of the predator-prey relationship between the predator and the prey. Okay. Exhibit 3. RNA says, I mean who? I only know Uracil. So this one, you guys actually have to know some biology to know this, because... RNA doesn't have any thymine, it only has uracil, whereas DNA has thymine, but no uracil. So RNA says, thymine who? I only know uracil, because that's literally true. Anyway, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So that was my K-pop presentation. Now I'm going to finish reading the comments. Um... Okay. okay. I'm just reading the comments, but... I'm glad you guys enjoy this. It's quality content. <laughs> I'm glad you guys like my content. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you for for going through that uh, presentation with me. I'm surprised this live isn't over an hour yet, but I'm glad you guys really enjoyed it. I'm going to um since the live's not over, I think I'm going to tell you. So I'm going to do this activity on Monday. I'm going to show you. <clears throat> I'm going to show you my, my, my uh, slides. I created this for Monday because I need to teach on Monday. Or yeah, I need to teach this review of chapter three point four and three point five, which is cell transport. And so, this is. I'm just gonna go through these slides and then yeah I made all I made all these myself. Um but i I really like this thing that I'm doing <clears throat> because I'm gonna tell a story about when I was a kid. So basically when I was a kid I went to Long Beach and I tried to catch these little hermit crabs on the beach is on the pier and I just picked them up and put them in a bag and then the first time I did it I took it home and it died instantly like before I even got home and so I was like oh no what's wrong so being the curious intellectual I was as a young boy I decided to try again after my mom informed me that um, crabs need water to survive and so I brought the crabs home after putting them in my drinking water so I I put my I, I put fountain water in the bag and then I brought them home like that and they still died and I was like oh no what's wrong so then I was like oh wait yeah the seawater the seawater has salt and obviously the sea water has a lot of other stuff too but basically i was like okay i'm gonna bring them home in a bag of ocean water so the next time i went i went and brought crabs home in a bag of ocean water and they still died so here's a surprise like why did they still die even though they were in seawater which is apparently what they need right so what happened, what do you think happened in each case, one to three, that caused the crabs to die? Um, I basically went through number one and number two. Number three, students should be able to think about it more, think about why the crabs died. Um, using prior knowledge, because we went through a lot of other stuff, like respiration and oxygen and carbon dioxide and things like that that they could use but unfortunately a lot of students have struggles with um thinking about this stuff so then i give them some time and then i switch to the next slide and i basically discuss it with them now obviously oh no i only have two minutes remaining so so um i'm going to read everything and then and i'm going to leave i think one of my students is in here so my student who's in here is just just gonna copy down everything and then um and then get Straight A's, right? I have one minute and 30 seconds to read everything. I'm glad you guys are enjoying my, my teaching. Anyway, I was going to go through the story, but I need to read through the comments. So you guys can just read the slide.
<laughs> you got it? Oh my god. Oh my god. No! Okay, I need to delete this live. My students are gonna take all the answers from the slide. And they're gonna cheat, unfortunately. Anyway, so... I'm gonna have them write- I'm gonna have my students basically write a letter of advice to young Mr. Law and tell him how to save his crabs based on everything we went through. Using osmosis and diffusion and everything else like cell membranes, um, oxygen, carbon dioxide, respiration, things like that. And then we're gonna do a Kahoot. And they're gonna do some um, review for their test on Thursday. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna go. So thanks for. Thanks for coming. Um, see you guys another time. I'll put it up on YouTube. Peace out. I have six seconds left, so bye bye. <laughs>